chickens and welcome back to Shorm Grow. We're going to focus on continuing to build uh, the platform that will eventually become the city portion of the Isles of Murtag. That's going to take a while. I mean, I'm thinking of after I get the platform, I'm going to go back to the titular Shorm Grove and then work it on making a small little mountain village because I think things have changed where only like scholars or whatever in the in a mountain biome will give a certain enchantment so yeah okay getting my whole layout here set up Okay, getting the chat up, and while you know, I'm building, I'm going to do another yellow brick road theory. Or, you know, if you want to chat, you know, I'll chat. I'm getting this theory <laughs> out somehow. I was originally thinking, like, this, my next topic was going to be of something about in a violent nature that was recently released. Simplest way to explain it would be an art house Friday the 13th. Really good movie, but you honestly do have to like art house movies to like it because it is while the kills are gory and awesome, especially two that really stand out, 90% of the movie is you following the killer who walks. So it's like 90% just walking in the woods. It was filmed in Ontario, Canada, so honestly the scenery is just breathtaking I don't mind slow movies as long as the payoff is worth it and in my opinion the payoff in a uh, violent nature is very much worth it <laughs> Just looking over and I'm like, I can totally finish this part today, and it's... But, you know, in reality, yeah, I know that's not going to happen tonight. Aw, oh, the dolphin has a little faith in... has some faith in me. Okay, let's look at my bullet points. Oh god, this bullet point needed some editing. <laughs> because I was like supposed to be a little bit of summary, but then it's like theory and it's like Oh my god. Ooh. So anyways, Yellow Brick Roads, a cosmic horror movie that was released in 2010, and it's low budget, like a bunch of good cosmic horror movies are. Like the Endless, also outstanding movie. But Yellow Brick Road is about this one team led by Teddy. And... You know, they're going down the titular yellow brick road to figure out why this town just for some reason left. Walked and left. And while the majority were found dead, there were a few that disappeared. And so Teddy's group is, you know, trying to find, figure out why that happened by walking the road themselves. You know, the movie itself is very 
definitely feels to be separated into two halves. The first is all build up and the second half is shit seriously hits the fan. And that first death that happens in the movie to me it was really shocking because everything is so calm up to that point. Like, there's still, you know, stuff happening, stuff being hinted at, but it's like, ah! Yeah. See you next point. Okay, so cosmic horror movies answer questions but also leave the majority unanswered. So, what if the summary I just gave wasn't? what was actually happening, and yeah, this theory is probably just BS, but... Again, I find th making theories fun because I'm interacting with the work, and not because, you know, I think it's, you know, really right, or I want it to be right, or else. Some people, it seems like, if their theory isn't proven to be a hundred percent correct and can they get a little mad but not me I just like to have fun okay so do 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 So, this theory does actually tie into my previous, the previous episode of Shorm Grove, where I talked about another theory I had about the movie. And the basic of that is, you know, the, when you go down the yellow brick road, every timeline of you going down the road happens at once. So my theory was that we're not actually watching the original timeline of how Teddy and gang got down the, you know, got down the titular yellow brick road to start off with. It was just one of many outcomes. I mean, the usher at the end of the movie talks about how there are many endings, and so, for the sake of the theory, I was like, eh, that could mean multiple timelines, multiple endings to the path. And sometimes, some people will make it to the end, and the version we see in the movie, the only one that makes it to the end of the road is Teddy, and I guess you could technically say his wife, Melissa? But, you know, she doesn't exactly walk to it on her own. She's murdered by Daryl, then brought to the theater by the usher. Yeah. And by the time Daryl kills Melissa, like, her husband has left her because Teddy continues to go north. And since there was a disagreement of where... Hey, hi, Luck uh, Lucker0811, how you doing? Let's 
since there was a discussion about an argument about which way the group should go, Teddy decides to leave on his own. And then he might think it's a the character's name starts with a W. You know, had instead of succumbing to the road, decided to end himself. And so Melissa was all on her own and yeah. Yeah, that's that's nice. <laughs> uh, this is part of an eventual city. This is the actual city part, and this is just you know, the well will be the floor. And the walls and ceiling will be wood because I want the city portion to be unassuming from the outside. And villagers will live on the islands you know, with much simpler trappings. And I've gone all. Here, this is the island I'm calling Navi, after one of my birds that passed away last year. I believe this is Navi. Yeah, this island's Navi, and uh, still have to work to put on the farm. Thought I was going to have, like, some eating area here. I do have more than one reason to go back to Shoreham Grove. And I will also build up the other island, Ghost, which is the name of my one of my parakeets that passed away early this year, so. Yeah, big project. <laughs> Thanks. Hopefully when <laughs> when it's all finished it will still look good. It's just taking forever. <laughs> I even decided to finally switch to creative mode. Made a copy of the world just to finish the platform. And I'm thinking I'm going to still use the survival peaceful version to probably expand villages. I still want to get some achievements and I didn't want to give up you know how far I had gotten in this world just to finally get this <laughs> this, this part done God, God, <laughs> just accidentally pressed there. I can need to get a sip of water and remind myself where I am. So yeah, this uh, new yellow brick road theory I had ties into, you know, that old theory I had, and then also, also thinking of what the original timeline was. Again, probably wrong, but it's fun. I'm 
I'm trying to... Okay, I need to look at my bullet points again to figure out what I want to say next. Eh. Because my setup right now, I can view either the chat or the bullet points, but I can't view both at once. And I don't want to slow down this building process too much just to constantly look. <laughs> yeah, this... I had actually stopped working on this for a while. <laughs> and I kept... I got obsessed with Skyrim and constantly played that. And, I don't know, besides that, the... The schedule I used to have was ruined by other factors, so... Yay! But finally got back to it. I want to finish this in this lifetime because I want to make other huge structures in the future. But... Let's see. Yeah, let's see, do, 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 so I don't have to... Now this theory, that again, probably wrong, theorizes that Teddy and Melissa, husband-wife duo, were the only ones to escape the yellow brick road, or at least seem to, because near the beginning of the movie you see, you know, one of those tapes, you know, that's totally real, and where there was like an interview with the only person who managed to survive, and that person who quote unquote managed to survive still acted like he was on the road. Like he was mentioning the music and the music appeared seemingly out of nowhere when you're on the road. So. so escaping the road doesn't actually mean you escape from it, but anyways this original timeline, Teddy and Melissa end up escaping, and he ends up writing his book. Which was another reason why he got a team together to go down the road. Because he was very obsessed with this one town, and, you know, decided he wanted to write a book about it, so yeah. So he goes back, so when he gets back he ends up writing a book where he does warn that, you know, going down this road is just stupid and here's every reason why. <laughs> but he doesn't, but he's good enough not to, you know, give instructions like, oh, the beginning of the path is here and here exactly. But somehow, you know, people being the curious creatures that they are, which is really not a, a good trait if you find yourself in a cosmic horror movie. Cosmic Horror asking questions can get you into more trouble than the answers will ever be worth. I'm going to actually need to look at my bullet points in a moment. I'll also drink some water so my mouth doesn't totally go dry. <laughs> Okay. 
I thought I was going to bring up a different point, but I guess past me didn't want me to bring up that point. So, Liv, in one scene near the end of the movie, finally you know, answers the question about, you know, why the townspeople walked. She talks about how... Well, how it's something that, you know, you just have to live in the town to understand why. And... The basis is that people feel the pull of the road because they think because they think the road can't understand them in a way you know no one else can. That's the big draw of it. it people, you know, just have this innate need to be understood and she as she explains it she's like this isn't something you can just write a book about like <laughs> the need to be understood to her is like I can't you know chug out how many words the book will be And wanting to be understood is just a basic human need. You know, every one of us wants it in some way, shape, or form. And sometimes people feel like, you know, no one understands them and just... And so... To them, at basically a most desperate hour, with such a big need, they might not really be thinking clearly. I mean, Liv definitely wasn't. Like, in her whole little speech, she eventually goes like, I thought the... I'm paraphrasing it because I can't remember the exact lines, but she talks about how she thought she came on this journey, this expedition, because she thought the road would understand her, and now she's scared that it does. Like, the road definitely pulls out the worst of people. The little sibling rivalry between Daryl and Aaron ended with Daryl's kill killer nature coming out. Walter, that was the the fr Melissa the friend's name, and Walter ends up like the. He commits suicide because he was escaping the road's pull to make him most likely rape uh, Melissa or it or consensual, whichever if she wanted sex or not with him. And so he got rid of that nature. And so he knew that at some point the road would take him over so he opted out. Like, Liv definitely got violent near the end. She had to kill uh, the ranger that was with them because he was admitting to 
he wouldn't say what, but he would just say unspeakable. And, you know, you know, just, I don't want my blood on my knife, so, you know, twist my neck. And so she's able to find the, you know, the part of her that wants to break his neck, and that ends up... She ends up killing Daryl, which is honestly a good thing, but she can't take that the road actually knows her and ends up eating Nightshade until, yeah, it's a really happy movie. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, at least she went out on her terms. So that's good. God. Some movies, like, hey, that was a good outcome for that character, is like, yeah. <laughs> horrible, horrible, out of context. Oh, yeah, and so this innate need for people to be understood, wanting to be understood makes everyone, you know, obsessed with the Elbrick Road. And somehow that causes the end of the world. I, uh, I will <laughs> admit this theory is a little bare bones with, you know, It needs, yeah, a lot of room to flesh it out. Maybe that'll be in future episodes. Maybe not. I cannot promise again. Like last time, I thought this episode was going to be me talking maybe about the ending of In a Violent Nature. And I was just like going for days and nights going, figuring out if me talking about the film would have anything worth saying. Okay, let me finish this up. Oh, okay. I think we can see a little bit of the mainland there. Hi! <laughs> the mainland is Honestly, pretty close by. Oh, my finger is sore. <laughs> my finger's like, this is why we don't do this every night now. <laughs> oh my god, okay, let me see. So, continuing on with the theory and not focusing on... Why are you out here so far, dude? It's... Uh, yeah. That or my finger. Whee! Look at it! They disappeared! Oh, they reappeared! So anyways, uh, continuing on with that theory, they, Teddy and Melissa feel really guilty for what they've done. You know, they should have written the book, but yeah. <laughs> and so they decide to go on the yellow brick road and maybe hopefully find a way to reverse things. When the movie begins, it's sort of, I don't know, oddly, and suddenly the usher is giving Teddy, you know, the documents he needs. All just made it really appear like they were already on the road. 
Curse that snap something you'd think, yeah. First time watching, most likely, but yeah. <laughs> so they decided to go back on the road. And this end of the world scenario is, to me, is a little bit cemented by a nightmare Melissa had before, right before Teddy leaves her and the rest of the people that are traveling with her at the time, because the group does split up. Daryl ends up escaping and running off. Oh, and then see, I think it was yeah, the ranger and Liv want to go different ways than Melissa, Walter, and Jill. I believe I'm getting her name right, but yeah, Jill has, to me, one of the most, you know, the most horrific death in the movie, but that's very personal and that would take a lot of talking about. <laughs> so we're going, we may save that until never, maybe a blog post, maybe a Shoreham Grove episode, but yeah. I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> yeah, and if, if you've seen the movie, you might guess why that would take a lot of explaining for me to go into. Because outwardly, it's not one of the most graphic deaths in the movie, but yeah, it's emotionally, it, it, it's honestly something else. But anyways, back to Melissa's nightmare before I get totally sidetracked. I mean, I need to not get utterly distracted <laughs> while talking about something in the video. I need a script, not bullet points. But anyways, I like this to be freeform enough so I can actually talk with people that decide to chat while also talking about topics. So, yeah. Anyways, Melissa's nightmare that she tells Teddy is they go back home and the world has ended. Like, everyone's gone. She tells that to Teddy before, you know, he leaves. And then at the end of the movie, she's in the film Teddy and other people are watching. And it shows her corpse and the background is, you know, burning world like she said her dream was. Now the ending was a little bit rushed. You know, I like the ending and so when Brian, my husband, watched it with me, no, I wanted to get his opinion. And he did feel that the ending was rushed, like there was supposed to be a lot more. And, you know, felt rushed because it was. But the fact that Melissa tells Teddy her nightmare and the nightmare is revealed on film at the end seems to me to indicate that that nightmare is important really important to the film in some way shape or form i'm not saying it has anything to do with my theory but it definitely does feel like that is important like we need to focus on it a little bit Is that a fit? That's a dead fish. That's what that was. <laughs> okay, let's see next bullet point. K. 
Okay, I'm going to need to take a sip of water because I've been talking. Now this next part of the theory is very much dependent on who or what the usher is. I think someone had a us briefly reading Reddit a Reddit thread about the movie. And someone had a theory about the usher being one of the townspeople. It could be that could be yeah, I wouldn't he could be a manifestation of the road itself in some physical you know in, as a human you know, it's but for the sake of this theory the sure whoever he or it actually is Yeah, I'm not going to get... <laughs> it seems so far away! Okay, I got totally distracted by it. But yeah, so... For the sake of this theory, the usher, whoever it or he is... Is in opposition to the road. And so when he's talking to Tay in the beginning... He's honestly hopeful that his, Teddy and Melissa's goal of basically ending the road's terror, saving the world, will actually happen. And so at the end, when Teddy comes into the theater, he's very pissed off because... It didn't work. The road still rang strong. The world has ended. Maybe there's like little handfuls of humanity, but eventually everything's going to be engulfed by the obsession of the road. I mean, who knows? Maybe the road has will get new entrances for all the people like me has enough power to get more entrances and people will be obsessed with the road and eventually go down it. So it'll be so it won't just be, you know, avoiding Friar. It'll be avoiding a bunch of places. I don't know. Well, there's many endings. There can be a lot of beginnings. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, that's my theory and all its insane glory. And now I will just work on getting way over there. Ah. <laughs> and uh, if you haven't seen Yellow Brick Road yet and you like low budget movies, if you like cosmic horror, I would highly recommend it. It just... I can understand if you don't like things that are low budget. I love B-horror movies, so... Yeah, I've seen... Film quality so bad it seems like they just picked up a camera and shot it and it's, it's just it's, it's <laughs> I've seen low quality like people that don't watch B movies and like some movie comes out in theater like this is the worst movie ever this is the worst acting ever it's like <laughs> oh I have stared to, into the abyss and I can tell you however bad you think those actors are they're Oscar worthy compared to the shit I have seen. Uh. 
Also, if other good cosmic horror is The Empty Man, just to warn y'all, the first act and the third act are just, will have you glued to your seats. The second act is where things get, eh, get a little rough. Sometimes it's really good, sometimes it feels like a slight endurance test. If you have that movie, you're... I don't think the smartest person in life could guess what was happening without it being spoiled as much as a movie like that can be spoiled. But at least the twists sort of add up. You know, it's not just like final season of Game of Thrones, which I am I am always going to be mad about. Always. For eternity. <laughs> no, it's Empty Man doesn't tend to throw out twists and turns just to be shocking. You can actually go back and connect the dots at least some of the time. It's Wow, it is confusing. I, I think it might be one of those things where you can't really spoil it because it's that odd of a movie. I just, I, I just have to take a moment to rest my poor finger. <laughs> Oof. This is a lot of work here. And this is just part of my big plan. This is a tiny bit. This is... By the time everything is said and done here... This is going to be a tiny bit of it. Just like, maybe 1% of that. <laughs> I remember when I was outlining this, I think I was just like, is this big enough? Yeah, I think this might be. And now working on it, I'm just like, what the hell was I on? Did it really have to be this big? <laughs> See, that's sometimes the problem of working on a long project. The first beginning you'll be really inspired like yeah this isn't that bad and I know to expect that because I've worked on long projects before <laughs> not like this level not like Minecraft but I am aware of the whole obsession going into why am I doing this and just yeah Originally made this world just going, I'm going to find a little cherry grove, build up a village, and then eventually, boom, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, Shorm Grove is basically my main base. Where I have things where I can get supplies I need. You know. Eventually need to build the farming area here. Yeah, I, I do like the mushroom biomes. So the little village there, I want to keep as much of the, you know, the original you know, biome around there as possible because I find it beautiful and I figure if you live in a place you you will find beauty in it. Just this sense of you know, 
home. This may be utter trash, but it's home. Maybe the wall's made from bamboo, but some darker wood seems, you know, better. Would that just stand out a little too much? I mean, the pink is at least going to be at the bottom where eventually, you know, if you're just riding a boat close by or swimming, you know, you won't really see that much color. Oh my god, the end is in sight here. <laughs> at least at least for tonight's stream. Next five years is just gonna be this. God, that's what I feel like. This is just endless. Like at least in creative mode this is sped up. Because outside of creative mode I was 
I have a little cherry tree grove I made in the mainland of really close by. I know, like, right now it doesn't really seem like any land is really that close except over there, but trust me, it is. It's really close by. <laughs> Why? Oh, that's blocking me. Okay. That was confusing me. I'm like, is this bugging out? Oh. Maybe by December I'll get this all done. I'm not doing this every night either. Uh, Usually during this time, I'd be doing my Sk Skyrim no commentary stream because I slowed down with that and, you know. It's like, oh, just a few hours every night. That's fine now. Like, I started playing Skyrim. I was like, I c I'll just see how this is and maybe I'll, you know, do a long series where I, you know, do commentary about it. But, you know, I, I'll do it every now and again, whatever. And then it became my life. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. It has helped my viewer count on YouTube really sort of skyrocket there. I don't know, it seems like the Shorn Grove Streams now do better on Twitch than on YouTube. Sometimes it's like they do... Certain streams will do really good on either Twitch or YouTube, but not tending to do both. Get it all. I'll light in this place. Music here is so good. And yeah, I put these up there without creative mode, so I am proud of those. Donkey Tobias, named after, of course, one of the characters from the Animor series, book series, and Tobias was my first fictional character crush. God, that was so long ago. Yeah, the series came out first in 96. I was there since book one. I was like, oh, I'll just get this. And then it took over my life. I was... Okay, there's the first picture. Ta-da! Second picture, say cheese! Where am I going? Oh yeah, the island with the goddamn bills. <laughs> Is it or where I'm going? I'm 
there's my lovely pack of wolves. At least some of them. I also, in Shoreham Grove, keep a bunch of my cats and dogs there so I can easily breed them if need be. Like, of all these die, at least I could breed the wolves and kitties at home. Yeah. I love each and every one. You've gotten really close to that shroom, dude. That's a... Might not be healthy. Oof. But anyways, thank you everyone who watched to put up with my insane ramblings. Thank you, Looker0811, for talking with me. Oh. Hopefully in our lifetime, I will finish this structure. I hope you all watching have a lovely day, night, whenever you're watching this. Uh, I'm currently, it's 3 a.m. where I am, so hopefully you have a better sleep schedule than me. Yeah. <laughs> My sleep schedule is never going to get better. It's too late for me. Save yourself. And until next time, goodbye.